Okay, so we've um, now got the Google image in relation to the site that we've built. Okay, and as much as possible, we've endeavored to scale the image and position the image um, correctly in relation to the mesh. Okay, so it's probably close enough for our purposes at this stage. What we now need to consider is building a mesh for the neighbor on this side and for this side. Okay. Now we want the contours of the mesh to be fairly consistent because as far as we can tell, and this will be confirmed when the site visit takes place, is that um, there isn't necessarily a big difference in the slope of the land between um, the existing site or the site we're considering and the neighbors on either side. So what we'd like to do is effectively look like, create these two meshes that looks like an extension of this mesh. Okay. Um, so what we can do to uh, do that is if you recall how we built this mesh, we double clicked on the mesh tool and entered in all our parameters in the mesh selection settings. Now, because we haven't built any other mesh meshes, these uh, selection settings are just as we left them. But if, for example, we'd gone off and made other meshes in different parts of our project, then the mesh um, parameters for this particular mesh may not still be sitting as the default settings, okay? Because obviously we may have changed it for another mesh. But if you want to be able to use the characteristics of this mesh without having to recall exactly what you wrote in here, what you can do is utilize a um, pick up parameters button, okay? So if I just escape out so that nothing's selected, just explain what this pick up parameters button is. When you select the pickup parameters, you can hover already, you can hover over any building element and effectively pick up the parameters of that building of that element. Okay. So say for example, um, I changed my mesh positioning to be say 5,000 and went off to build another mesh. If I press OK and then go off and build my other mesh, when I come back to the mesh toolbox and double click, it's 5,000 that Archicad remembers is the last last mesh default setting that was set. But if I want to build my next mesh and I want just these characteristics of this mesh, if I go to the um, eyedropper or the um, pick up parameters, then I can click on this mesh and then notice how it changes back to a thousand because it recalls all the parameters that were used to make this mesh okay so now what i can do is effectively draw another mesh with an estimate of this um, boundary outline and this one here now when we draw this mesh what we should keep in mind is we want it to look seamless so the first side of the mesh that we should draw should be this side okay just as a good um, drafting habit. So if we draw the mesh starting from here, okay, to up to here, then what we should do for this side is we want it to be parallel to this line here. Okay, so it just looks like a clean, continuous mesh. So we want it parallel to this line, okay? We can't hold the shift key to let that, to make that happen because shift is just going to constrain it to parallel to the grid. So what we do is that we go to Windows and I can do this even whilst I'm in the middle of drawing that mesh. I go to Windows, Toolbars and then Drafting Aids. And what Drafting Aids is, is um, aids to help you draft in a certain way. So say for example, this one is the parallel constraint which is the drafting aid that we will use. But there are other types of drafting aids such as perpendicular constraint, offset, and so many more things. Okay, But the one we're going to use is parallel constraint 
because then if we click the parallel constraints icon and then choose the line by which we want to constrain parallel to, which is this one, make sure that the Mercedes key is um, appearing before you click this line. Then when I draw this line, I'm not holding the shift key or anything, notice how even if I'm moving my cursor up and down, it's still only constraining to this parallel line okay so what I can do then is come out to say and I'm moving my cursor down to about here moving to say here just going to click to say here okay that closes this line here and then I'm going to draw a line to say here and then this last one okay this last one I want to be parallel to this line so what I'm going to do is press this parallel constraint and choose this edge and notice how I've totally overshot okay but what I'm going to do is click on this when click on this point here which is where I would normally like to just close the mesh shape but I'm going to click here and then I'm going to come to here and close it. Okay, so what that's created for me is this shape, okay, which is a bit unusual. But what I'm going to do is um, change the edge of the mesh or manipulate this edge of the mesh to, mesh to bring it, offset it back into the here. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is let's see. I'm going to offset to here, okay, which, did you see what I did? I'll just control Z that so that you can see. So I'm going to click on this edge, make sure this offset edge button is selected, and then I'm going to snap back to this edge here, okay? Now, this is all very well and good, but it looks like then that I haven't really positioned the picture very carefully because all of this area, which doesn't actually look like pathway to me, is still part of this site. So I've really got the site too short or too not long enough. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to move the picture just up a little bit to to really consider that this is part of the mesh, okay? And then this part here, I'll attend to when I come to draw the part, footpath and the street. All right, okay, let's see. Now, I want to do the same for the other side, so for the other mesh, okay? So if you notice, I'll just look in 3D, there's that mesh and it's, it's sitting down here like where our original mesh was sitting before. Okay, so we're going to do this one on this side now, and I'm just going to show you how to do that. So pick up parameters to pick up the parameters of this mesh. Then because I want um, a clean uh, intersection between these two, I'm going, oh, sorry, a clean, um, clean edge between this mesh and this mesh, and I want it to look uh, continuous once I've adjusted for the uh, spot levels. I'm going to click from here to start the mesh down to uh, where's this end? Down to here. Okay. Now it looks like I've overshot a little bit on this side as well, but I'm going to click click the parallel line constraint, even though it's already coming all the way out to here, but just for good technique click the parallel line constraint and then before even clicking the end of this I can come up here to measure where the end of the boundary of the site's probably going to go okay so probably about say here let's see oh actually I'm going to make a little disclaimer I'm going to not I'm going to not make this parallel okay um, by just pressing the backspace key 
because actually when I think about when I look at it this doesn't really look this looks parallel to the grid rather than a continuation here so I'm going to click here and then hold the shift key and then click again okay so notice that this mesh is not going to follow where that F line is but that's because really on the picture it doesn't look like it goes in that direction then I'm going to hold I'm going to hold the shift key and then I'm going to come up to marry with the end of this point. Okay, so I haven't clicked my second time yet for this line. And I'm going to hover over to where I can um, constrain to where this point is and then click once more. And then notice how that's finished that line and then I can close this shape here. Okay, so that's the mesh on the left hand side and if we look 3D then you can see that that's the mesh there. Now what needs to happen is that it need, these two mesh need to be consistent with the um, mesh level that is up here. Okay, and We're going to attend to that in the next video.